though this worked in the early service, so I'm going to give you the opportunity as well. I hope you know what to do. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Hallelujah. Welcome to St. Peter's. A special welcome to our guests and visitors this Easter Sunday. We're glad that you're here. I'm great that God gives you opportunities to join us in the future. We, we thank the soloists for, for the pre-service music already. We have some great hymns for you this morning. And yes, we do have, I know that my Redeemer lives as well. That is one of the four. I once had an a Easter Sunday growing up where we didn't sing I know that my Redeemer lives. I just didn't quite feel like Easter, so we got that one. And uh, just pay attention, there's different sections of the, the church singing at different times. For, for future reference, this is lectern side and this is, is pulpit side. It's going to it's gonna come into effect later on. I invite you to participate in the service however you feel comfortable. Everything you need to follow along in the service you can find projected on the screen. We'll begin with the first hymn, hymn 720, Christ Jesus Lay in Death Strong Bands. The, the music for it is going to be the blue hymn book if you want to follow along. We'll sing the first hymn in 720.
with me in the opening sentences of the Confession and Absolution as it is printed on the screen. God is love. Christ is alive. Death is defeated. Life is eternal. Therefore we gather in joy. And we live in hope. The Lord is risen. He is risen indeed. Most merciful God and Father, you do not desire the death of a sinner, but rather that we should turn to you and be saved. Knowing your will and trusting in your mercy, we come before you and confess our sins. Heavenly Father, Holy God, we acknowledge our faults to you. With the thoughts of our hearts, we have grieved you. With the words of our lips, we have displeased you. With the deeds of our hands, we have sinned against you. Do not punish us in your anger, but for the sake of our crucified and risen Savior, comfort us with your free forgiveness. Jesus, our Savior, died for all our sins and rose to assure us that our faith is not in vain. We are no longer in our sins. As a servant of the risen Christ and by his command, I announce to you that your sins are forgiven in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Peace be with you. Amen. And we pray. <laughs> Almighty God, by the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, you conquered death and opened the gate to eternal life. Grant that we who have been raised with and through baptism may walk in the newness of life and ever rejoice in the hope of sharing His glory. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be dominion and praise now and forever. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. We now hear the selection from God.
first lesson for this Easter Sunday comes from Isaiah chapter 25. On this mountain, the Lord Almighty will prepare a feast of rich food for all peoples, a banquet of aged wine, the best of meats and the finest of wines. On this mountain, He will destroy the shroud that enfolds all peoples, the sheet that covers all nations. He will swallow up death forever. The Sovereign Lord will wipe away the tears from all faces. He will remove the disgrace of His people from all the earth. The Lord has spoken. And that day they will say, Surely this is our God. We trusted in Him and He saved us. This is the Lord. We trusted in Him. Let us rejoice and be glad in His salvation. This is the word of the Lord. Our second lesson comes from 1 Corinthians chapter 15. If only for this life we have hope in Christ, we are to be pitied more than all men. But since Christ has indeed been raised from the dead, the first fruits of those who have fallen asleep. For since death came through a man, the resurrection of the dead also comes through a man. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. But each in his own turn. Christ, the first fruit. Then, when He comes, those who belong to Him. Then the end will come when He hands over the kingdom to God the Father after He has destroyed all dominion, authority, and power. For He must reign until He has put all His enemies under His feet. The last enemy to be destroyed is death. This is the word of the Lord. The verse of the day, Alleluia, Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. Easter Sunday comes from Mark chapter 16. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of Jesus, and Salome brought spices so that they might go to anoint Jesus' body. Very early on the first day of the week, just after sunrise, they were on their way to the tomb. And they asked each other, who will roll the stone away from the entrance of the tomb? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. Don't be alarmed, he said. You're looking for Jesus, the Nazarene, who was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. See the place where they laid him? But go. Go. Tell his disciples and Peter, he is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. Trembling and bewildered, the women went out and fled from the tomb. They said nothing to anyone because they were afraid. This is the gospel of our Lord. You may be seated. We continue with our next hymn, hymn 160, this joyful Easter time.
saints who gather to worship their risen Lord. I've been thinking about it for months. Thinking about the fact that not only is this Easter Sunday, but for the first time in decades, Easter Sunday falls on April Fool's Day. And so I've been thinking about it for months on how to, to start this sermon because it's April Fool's Day, anything goes. I can say whatever I want and then April Fool's. Really a blank check. And I've thought about it. Different ways, different things I, I could say. Different pranks I could pull. But I'm not going to do that. You see, today is Easter. And that's way more important. You see, today we have this very important truth that I get to share with you. And it's a truth that changed the world. It's a truth that changed your life. It's a truth that changed my life. And so this truth is way more important. The fact that it is Easter, Easter Sunday, if I get the opportunity to share with you this truth, all will be made alive. Now, when we hear that, when we hear all will be made alive, Jesus was the first fruits. All will be made alive. Jesus rose from the dead. And because of that, because of that resurrection, all will be made alive. But when I say all, that will be all will be made alive. I mean all. No, not just believers. The Bible tells us all will be made alive. On that last day, when our Savior, our risen Savior, comes to judge the living and the dead, all will be made alive. righteous will go to eternal life and the wicked will go to eternal death. But all will be made alive. And those wicked who thought that oh, I'll be buried at sea or I'll be spread across such a great area that God will never be able to find me, never be able to put me together again, never be able to judge me. All will be made alive. So what really matters is whether you know this truth, whether you trust in this truth, whether you realize how important this truth is to your life. Because it matters. It matters that you know that all will be made alive. It matters that you know that your Savior rose, that you trust in your risen Savior. It matters. Easter Sunday started, that is, the first Easter Sunday, started in a very simple way, very mundane. Women getting up early to go to the tomb, bringing spices to give Jesus a proper burial. You see, Jesus had been buried in haste, and, and they wanted Jesus to at least get that. That dignity. He deserved at least that much. You see, he died right before the Sabbath, and not just any Sabbath, the Sabbath, the Sabbath of the Passover. So they had to bury him quickly before the Sabbath they started. It was a rush job, and they wanted to give Jesus a proper burial. Sure, their hearts were heavy. And the discussion was pretty mundane, too. As they're walking to the tomb, they realize that they might have overlooked something. How are we going to move 
move that stone in front of the tomb. See, this was a really big stone. And so, when, when they're discussing how are we going to roll this stone away, how are we going to even get access to the tomb, you have to understand, they had gravity working against them. This was a very big stone, and it sort of went in a channel so that once it was in place, you sort of had gravity on your side to get it in place. But once it was in place, really, really difficult to move at all. They would need a small army to move this stone. Having gravity work against you. And so this discussion of how are we going to move this stone, it's not just idle conversation. It's like, did we just overlook something that's going to completely throw a wrench in our plans where we're not even going to get to give Jesus the proper burial? Are we going to spend all this time and effort walking all the way out to that tomb just to find that we don't even have access? But when they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had been rolled away. And the angel took care of it for them. And for the angel, it wasn't really that big of a deal. The Bible tells us that the angel cast it aside and even sat on it. And before we get too busy marveling at, at the miraculous power of the angel who was able to move this tremendous stone with no seeming effort at all. Something that you or I would really not be able to do. Before we zone in on, on, on that wonderful, miraculous event, we would miss what was behind the stone. Which is so much more important. And that's the much bigger miracle this morning. The tomb is empty. And so as the women see this empty tomb, their hearts heavy begin to wonder. And it's one of those situations where within their experience, they've never witnessed someone rise from the dead before. And so you don't expect that. When you see the empty tomb, you think, oh my goodness, where's Jesus? What happened to him? It's not really in our experience to see someone rise from the dead. It's a good thing the angel was there. The angel got to tell them, no, no, no. Jesus told you this was going to happen on more than one occasion that he was going to suffer and die, but then he was going to rise again. Now go tell his disciples. You see, Jesus had mentioned this to them many times before this. But since it really isn't within our experience to see someone rise from the dead, they really weren't expecting it. You see, the, the time on, on Saturday and, and, and Friday before, before Jesus rose from the dead, Jesus' disciples and, and all of his followers, they could have been spending that entire time throwing the biggest party. Because everything that Jesus said would happen has happened. Now we just have to wait for him to rise from the dead. That's not what they did, was it? Oh, we find them huddled in the upper room, we find them scared for their lives. You see, if Jesus' enemies, if the chief priests, if, if the, the big shots of our culture were able to do that to Jesus, Jesus who was so popular, who had this huge following, who we never thought that they would be brazen enough to condemn to death, what are they going to do about me? They're going to have no problem wanting to snuff me out. So they spent that time in fear, in sorrow, instead of rejoicing over Jesus' coming resurrection. Now, maybe somewhere in their heart there was that little spark of hope. Maybe within their heart, there was just that, that little portion of them that, that, that couldn't possibly 
believe it, but yet kind of believed it, that Jesus would, in fact, rise. Maybe that little bit of hope that Jesus would do as he said and would rise from the dead. That fear, that little spark of hope, those disciples overwhelmed with sorrow and fear, that fear would be replaced with something else. You see, that group would go out to the world and proclaim Jesus' resurrection. And that group all but one of them would give their life for this truth. That Jesus has in fact risen from the dead. That the tomb is empty. If you think about it, if someone has risen from the dead, someone that told you that he was going to suffer and die and he was going to rise again, and then that his resurrection means something for you and for the whole world, you would want to share that information. It would be the most miraculous, incredible thing that you would ever witness, and you would carry that message to the world. And they did. That message... That movement that started 2,000 years ago conquered the entire Roman Empire and reached to the ends of the earth where people heard about the resurrection of Jesus. And they heard about what it meant for them in their lives. Think about it this way. The disciples filled with all of that fear for Jesus' enemies that killed Jesus and would have no problem with snuffing them out as well. That group of mostly uneducated fishermen went out and spread that message to the world and all but one of them went to their death because of it. Had their life cut short because of that message that the tomb was empty. So I ask you, do you die for a lie? See, the disciples didn't just go out and spread this message about Jesus' resurrection and what that means for every single person and the forgiveness that is theirs and the resurrection that is theirs because of Jesus and His resurrection because they were in some sort of inability to come to terms with, with their grief and, and they were in denial because of this loss that they suffered. No. They went to their deaths, all but one of them, because of an inescapable truth that they just had to share, that Jesus rose from the dead and His resurrection means that all will be made alive. That is the message that brought 11 out of the 12 to go to the dead. It's a message worth sharing. I think so often as Christians, even though we know about Jesus, even though we know that truth, we know that because He lives, we too will live, that because of Jesus, because of His forgiveness, because of His blood, that we have heaven, that God has removed all of our sins, all of our guilt, even though we know that, we've got to trust that. See, I think so often it's so easy for us in our lives <coughs> when we're filled with that, that, that guilt, that sin, because we don't live the life the way that God wants us to. And so when I see my sins, when I see how I'm so far from what I want to be for my God, what my God wants for me, the temptation is there. Instead of clinging and trusting and rejoicing in this truth of the empty tomb, we flee for the discomfort that we feel. 
Jesus died for me and this is how I'm living? Jesus died for me and this is the sin that I still struggle with? And so what we do is we stay away from the truth. We don't want to hear it because it makes us feel uncomfortable. It makes us feel guilty because we still sin. Jesus did that for me. And this is how I repay him. Instead of trusting in this inescapable truth of the risen Lord, we flee, we avoid, we avoid the pain, we avoid the guilt, and we keep it at arm's length. And that makes us feel better. Ignorance is bliss. But there's something so much better. So much better. Instead of ignorance is bliss. The knowledge of our risen Lord, the knowledge of the tomb being empty, the knowledge of what our Savior's resurrection means to us. <coughs> so much better. Instead of fleeing from the, the, the guilt that we feel over our sin, we need to be reminded constantly of this truth. That Jesus rose from the dead. The first fruits. Jesus rose, and because He rose, we all will rise. We all will be made alive. This truth needs to be the most important thing in our lives. It's the only thing that conquers that sin and guilt. Completely takes it away. We have the opportunity. A message of the empty tomb. The message of of resurrection, the message of what our God has done for us is a message that's worth being shared. There's so many people in this world that are hurting and we have the opportunity to give them this knowledge which does provide the bliss, which does provide the joy. Because He lives, we too will live. We have heaven. Death is robbed of all of its power. But my prayer for you, not just on this Easter Sunday, but every single day, we have the opportunity to hear about this truth. See, it's not just Easter that this is relevant. It's not just Easter that this is true. It's every single day. It's every single moment. This is a truth that shapes the rest of our life. It alters our behavior. <laughs> It alters our attitude and it fills us with this inexpressible and inescapable joy. Because He lives, we too will live. We have heaven. No more tears. No more sorrow for the old order of things has passed away. Jesus is risen. And His resurrection is the guiding truth in our hearts and our lives. Happy Easter. Amen. Please stand. Now may the peace which transcends all understanding guard and keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. At this time we gather the offering. We also hear the offertory from the soloist. You may be seated.
Father, God of grace, you have brought us into a new and living hope by the resurrection of Jesus from the dead. Christ is risen. For as in Adam all die, so in Christ all will be made alive. He is risen indeed. He was delivered over to death for our sins and raised to life for our justification. Hallelujah. We marvel at the love you showed by your willingness to sacrifice your son to pay for our sins. We bow down in adoration at your mighty power, which raised him from the dead. We praise you for sending him true life and light into the world. Lord Jesus, God of grace, you have filled our hearts with resurrection joy by your victory over sin, death, and the grave. You have conquered the darkness and given us hope. With the church of every age, we offer you unending praise, for you have crushed Satan's head and removed our guilt. You are risen. Dear Savior, we who are weary and burdened come to you for rest, knowing that because of your perfect redemption, there is now no condemnation for us. You are risen indeed. Take away our doubts and fears, and daily renew us in the joy of our salvation. Hallelujah. Holy Spirit, God of grace, you have called us by the gospel and brought us to saving faith in our risen Lord. We glorify you for opening our eyes to see the light of the light. Keep us with Jesus Christ in the one true faith. He is risen. As we journey through life, make us yearn for the day when you will give eternal life to us and to all believers in Christ. He is risen indeed. And hear us, Lord, as we bring you our private petition. us as we proclaim the saving message of the crucified and risen Jesus near and far, so that many others may hear your call, obtain the salvation that is in Christ Jesus, and join us before the throne of our God and of the Lamb. And hear us, Lord, as we pray the prayer that you have taught us, the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with our next hymn.
Heavenly Father, you have not forsaken us or left us to our own destruction, but kept your ancient promise to send a Savior. We praise you for his perfect love, his innocent death, and his glorious resurrection. Because of your faithfulness to your promises, today is the day of victory. Trying God, kindle in our hearts a love for all people. Equip us with both the will and the words to tell others that Jesus has indeed risen from the grave. Use us to share the message of the empty tomb so that others too may rejoice in Jesus' Easter victory. Amen. Brothers and sisters, go in peace. Live in harmony with one another. Serve the Lord with gladness. Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. Lord, look upon you with his favor and give you peace. You may be seated. We conclude with the final hymn of 152. I know that my Redeemer lives. Please make note of the specific section singing the different verses.
Good morning again. Good morning. Good morning. Gotta just bask in that for at least a few seconds. Welcome to St. Peter's. A special welcome to our guests and visitors this Easter Sunday. We're glad that you're here. We we'll pray that God gives you opportunities to join us in the future. The neat thing is that really every Sunday is a mini Easter. Every Sunday is a chance to, to celebrate the truth of the resurrection, that, that, that truth that's true every moment of every day. And so I, I hope that, that God gives you opportunities to, to be reminded of that truth that makes all the difference in your life and my life. And in the future, on Sundays, on sometimes on Saturdays, sometimes on Thursdays, we gather together and we get to praise our God for that truth that, that, that changes our life. Just a couple of announcements for this morning. Um, for one, Ladies 8 will, will, will begin meeting again in the evenings. So Thursday, April 5th, 7 p.m., Ladies 8 will be, will be meeting. So we resume our, our evening um, meetings. We've been meeting in the, the morning for the, the winter months. So we'll resume our 7 p.m. evening Ladies 8 meetings. Saturday, April 7th, uh, 11, 11 a.m. to 2 p.m. fundraiser for, for Dev Drager at the Town Inn. Um, 4.30 Lakeside Lutheran Brand Event. And uh, then next Sunday, we actually have the opportunity to have uh, Pastor Clark Schultz here to, to, to share God's word for us. I ran into him and he said, hey, uh, I can't go to the Grand Event. And I said, well, I want to go to the Grand Event. He said, you want a guest preacher? So we have Clark Schultz here for us uh, next Saturday and Sunday for, for, for preaching. And uh, that enables me to, to get to go to the entire Lakeside Grand to support that wonderful, wonderful place where, where kids get to hear about Jesus every day. Those are all the announcements that I have. May God be with you with this. Yes, Pastor. We have, we have choir on Monday. We do. Yes. Yes, that's a yes. Yes. Okay. It is? Okay. And that's not a name of All right. I'm going to show up, but no one else is going to be there. Neil and I were the only ones that didn't get the nuts though. <laughs> Neil and I will have Neil and I will have choir. <laughs> I wasn't joking about that in the intro to the sermon. I really was thinking about the perfect April Fool's prank to start the, the sermon for Easter Sunday. But, um, we just we just did it in the first service, but it was so good that everyone in the first service was sworn to secrecy just so that. I wouldn't carry out a prank like that again. So you have to be at the first service. To do that. So those are all the announcements that I have. May God be with you on this season.